All right, steam locomotive mathematics. Is there any better sort of mathematics? Probably not. Uh, where do we leave off? Yeah, okay, that's another assertion, but I get where you're coming from. So where particularly do you want to start? Deepambor arrived at his effective pressure by experimentation. The locomotive dictionary arrived at its effective pressure by adopting 85% of boiler pressure. So a 15% reduction. So while Atlas had eight or so friction points here, 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 and here, a more modern locomotive has significantly more than that and is significantly heavier. So therefore, the amount of friction to be overcome is significantly higher. That's one reason for the adoption of the 85%. It's not the only reason. Boiler pressure also grew with that increase in boiler pressure. There was a greater loss of pressure in the steam being transmitted from the boiler to the cylinders. There was also a greater amount of back pressure in the cylinders to be overcome by that live steam. You can add in that all locomotives lose a percentage of the effective working face of the piston where the rod attaches to the piston. Some locomotives lost it on both sides. You can add into the mix the fact that the valve gear that Atlas had in 1834 was primitive by comparison to valve arrangements that came later. And as a result of that, there were differences from 1834 onwards in cutoff. And those differences in cutoff bring into play Boyle's Law, which is something that Deep and Bohr didn't take into account. The valve system on those early locomotives had a setting of full forward or full reverse with very little in between. Instead of using cutoff to promote the efficient use of steam, drivers would use the regulator, which with the low road speeds of those times wouldn't have been particularly problematic on a day-to-day -day basis. Subsequent valve systems had the ability to cut off the flow of steam into the cylinders. And when that cutoff occurred, the finite amount of steam contained in the cylinder was able to expand to complete the cylinder stroke. And thus, the volume it occupies increases. What Boyle's law says is this. A given amount of gas within a container exerts a pressure against the inside of that container. If you place the same amount of gas in a bigger container, it exerts a lesser pressure against the insides of that bigger container. So as the stroke in the cylinder continues, the pressure drops because the steam goes from occupying an area that big to occupying an area that big. Okay, so back pressure occurs because the live steam also needs to force the exhaust steam out of the cylinder. That exhaust steam has lost pressure consistent with Boyle's law, and it has an exit out to the atmosphere through the exhaust ports and up the chimney, but it still has pressure. And the live steam admitted to the working side of the piston needs to force that exhaust steam out through that narrow constricted opening and that takes effort and that effort is robbed from the effort that would otherwise be available to turn the wheels. We call that pressure exerted by the exhaust steam against the non-working face of the piston back pressure. In a saturated boiler, the steam contained in it is of a fairly consistent temperature and it's about 95 or so percent steam, the balance being water molecules that haven't yet turned to steam but are suspended in the steam. As the steam is piped from the boiler to the cylinders, it encounters cooler surfaces and so its temperature drops and the amount of steam decreases while the amount of water suspended in the steam increases. 
Now because this water is suspended in the flow of steam it doesn't create much of a problem other than at startup when the cylinders are dead cold and it's simply exhausted out the chimney. And together with the other factors that I've discussed it's rolled into that 85% that the locomotive dictionary equation uses. Yeah, for some reason New Zealand used 80%. Not sure why, if I ever find out, I'll let you know, or maybe I'll take my secret to the grave, who knows. It doesn't much matter that New Zealand used 80% instead of 85. We here were only ever comparing our locomotives with our locomotives. Liverpool and Manchester were only ever comparing Atlas to the other locomotives on its roster. Any given railroad was only ever comparing locomotives with others on the roster for that railroad. Yeah, that's an interesting one, right? Because on the face of the equation, it looks like we're coming up with a square cylinder. And no, pistons are not square. Uh, it's relatively easy. It has to do with mathematics, which, like I said earlier, isn't my strong point, but I do get this. The normal way to calculate the area of a circle is pi times radius squared, right? We all remember that from school. And if we put the radius of the pistons from Atlas into this nice online calculator, we get the area of one face of one piston. If we put the diameter in, we get four times that. And we want four times because if you remember, there are four power impulses in every turn of a locomotive's driving wheels two from the cylinders on the driver's side, two from the cylinders on the fireman's side. And the mathematics is such that it doesn't matter if we do four times the area of the piston or four times the stroke of the piston, because we ultimately get the same answer. But it's easier if we do it for four times the area of the piston, because that way we can get rid of pi from the equation. Yeah, that's an easy one when it comes down to it. Circumference is pi times diameter. That's something else we remember from school or if we've just Googled it. And since we have pi above the line, or we would have if we didn't get rid of it, and below the line working out our circumference of the driving wheels, we can cross them both out as common factors and the result is the same. And having pi not feature makes the mathematics a whole lot easier. So there we have it, there's the maths. The next episode will deal with what tractive effort actually practically meant. And look out for it, like, subscribe, enjoy. Cheers.